For a game built almost 30 years ago, Super Mario World set the landscape for how 2D games should be built. Besides the running and jumping, one element that is often overlooked is how the camera was set up. Basically, they use invisible barriers to decide when to move the camera. So if you're trying to move outside of these barriers, the camera begins following the character. But if you turn around and move in the other direction, you can move a little bit before the camera starts moving. Not only is this good for exploration, but it makes the whole experience a lot smoother. This concept is actually rather easy to mimic, so let's open up our Unity project and dive right in. For this video, I'm going to use the scene from my character controller series. If you have not watched that series yet, I recommend watching that first so you can understand how to move your character around the scene. So let's go ahead and highlight our camera. In the inspector, make sure that we set our projection to orthographic. Then let's add a C-sharp script to this camera, and let's call it camera follow, and then open it in the editor. The first thing we want to do is add a few variables to the top of our script. First, let's create a public game object called follow object. Then let's create a public vector 2 called follow offset. And then lastly, let's create a private vector 2 called threshold. So the way this will work is we have a follow object, which will be defined as our character. Then we decide how much distance in Unity we want our character to be able to move freely before our camera starts moving. This will be defined as our follow offset. We then subtract our follow offset by our screen dimensions and create a threshold, which defines our boundary box. The smaller our x and y values are for our follow offset, the larger our boundary box becomes. A value of zero would set the boundary box to the same size as our screen. Ideally, we want this to be right about here, but we could play with this number in the inspector to find a value that works for your game. So the first thing we want to do in this script is create a function to calculate our threshold. So down here, let's write private vector three calculate threshold. We use a vector three here because we want this function to return a vector three value. The first thing we need to figure out is the aspect ratio of our camera, which we can define by writing rect aspect equals camera dot main dot pixel rect. Then let's define the dimensions of our camera in a vector two called T. So let's write new vector two and in parentheses put camera dot main dot orthographic size times aspect dot width divided by aspect dot height. And for the Y parameter, let's put camera dot main dot orthographic size. We use our camera's orthographic size here to figure out the height and width of our screen boundary box. If you're interested in learning more about the math behind this, I created a video a while back that covers this, so I'll put a link to that in the description. Next, in order to calculate our threshold, we just need to subtract this boundary box value by our follow offset value. So let's write t.x minus equals follow offset dot x. Then let's do the same for y by writing t.y minus equals follow offset dot y. And then we can return this value by writing return t. Now, whenever we declare calculate threshold, it will output our threshold boundary box in the form of a vector three value. To put this to the test, let's draw a gizmo to show us in the editor where our boundary box is. If you've been following along during the series, you should be pretty familiar with gizmos by now. So let's use the built in Unity function called on draw gizmos and make sure you spell it exactly like that. For the first line, let's define the color we want our gizmo box to be. So let's write gizmos.color equals color.blue. Then let's define a vector two and let's call this border and let's set it equal to calculate threshold. And then let's use a gizmo wire cube to draw our border box. We can do this by writing gizmos.drawWire cube and for the first parameter we needed to define the position so let's set it to the camera's position or transform.position. Then for the second parameter we want to double our border value so let's write new vector three and for the x parameter let's put border.x times two and for the y parameter put border.y times two, and for the Z parameter, just put one. Now if we save our work and go back into Unity, we should see a couple of text boxes in the inspector. And if we increase the X and Y values, we should start seeing a blue boundary box inside our editor window. This is a gizmo, and it will allow us to visually see where our threshold is. So the next thing we want to do is move our camera so our follow object, aka our character, fits within this blue box. So back in our script, let's define threshold in our start function by writing threshold equals calculate threshold. Then we want to move our character on the same frame that our character is moving. So instead of writing our code in an update function, let's write it in fixed update instead. Next, we want to calculate the distance our file object is from the center of our camera. So firstly, let's define our file object's position each frame by writing vector to follow equals file object dot transform dot position. Then let's create a float called x difference that will keep track of the distance our character is from the center of the x axis. We can do this by writing float x difference equals vector two dot distance. And for the first parameter, let's write vector two dot right times transform dot position dot x. 
And for the second parameter, let's put vector 2.right times follow.x. Now vector 2.distance measures the distance from point A to point B. Since we only want to know this value on the x-axis, we must only supply values from the x position. This is why we multiply by vector 2.right, which gives us a value of 1, 0, 0. So when we multiply, we're basically saying create a new vector 2 with the x value equal to transform.position.x and put 0 for the y and z values. Then let's do the same thing for y difference, except change vector 2.right to vector 2.up and also change position.x to position.y. And now that we have our distance figured out, we just need to check if the distance exceeds our threshold boundary to decide whether we want to move our character or not. But before we do that, let's create a new vector 3 called new position and let's set it equal to this camera's current position or transform.position. This way by default, our camera will remain where it currently is. So let's write if mathf.abs and in parentheses put x difference is greater than or equal to threshold.x, then let's set new position.x equal to follow.x. We use mathf.abs here because we want our x difference value to always be a positive number. If our character is moving left, our x difference would actually be a negative number, so mathf.abs converts this value to an absolute value. Then if this is true, we want our camera to move in the direction of our follow object. So now let's do the same thing for the y position by writing if mathf.abs y difference is greater than equal to threshold.y. And again, let's put new position.y equals follow.y. And now all we need to do to move our camera is alter its position. So let's write transform.position equals new position. And now if we go back into Unity, let's drag the object that we want our camera to follow, which happens to be our character. And then go ahead and press play. If we move around our scene, you'll see that the minute our character exceeds the blue boundary box, our camera jumps to that location. This indicates that our code is working properly, but this jumpy motion is not ideal. What we really want to see is a smooth transition of our camera following our character. So let's go back into our script and implement that. The first thing we should do is set up a public float called speed. We will use this to define how fast we want our camera to move, so let's give it a default value of 3 for now. Then back in our fixed update function, let's change this line so that we use the built-in function called move towards. So let's go ahead and write vector 3 that move towards, and for the first parameter, we need to put our current position, so let's write transform.position, and for the second parameter, let's put new position. Then the third parameter is the easing part, so let's put speed times time dot delta time. This allows our camera to incrementally move towards this new position each frame. So now if we go back into Unity and test this out, you'll see this movement is a lot smoother, but in my scene my character has the ability to outrun the camera, which isn't good at all. We can adjust the speed value to be a number that's a lot higher, but something that would work better is if we set the speed on the fly to the exact speed our character is traveling. Since our player has a rigid body attached to it, we can reference our follow object's velocity and use that for the speed. So back in our script, let's first create a reference for our follow object's rigid body. So up at the top, let's write private rigid body 2D, and let's just call this RB. Then in our start function, let's define this reference by writing RB equals follow object dot get component and then rigid body 2D. Now that we have our RB defined, we can reference its velocity but we want to use the default speed as a backup in case our character moves outside our boundary box before our camera is able to catch up to it. This allows our camera to keep moving even if our character has stopped. So for this, we're going to write a shorthand if statement. So go ahead and write float move speed equals rb.velocity.magnitude is greater than speed, then put a question mark to indicate the true value, which is rb.velocity.magnitude, and then a colon to indicate the false value, which happens to be speed rb.velocity.magnitude is a float value equal to the highest velocity value. So regardless which direction our character is moving, this will output the highest speed. And for those who aren't familiar, this basically sets move speed equal to our character's velocity if it exceeds our speed value. And if it's lower than our default speed value, then we just use our default value. And to finish this off, simply just replace speed with move speed. And there you have it. Our camera now follows our character no matter which direction it moves. If you enjoyed this video and would like us to make more, please help us out by pressing the like button and subscribing to this channel so you don't miss any future videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.